Hello and welcome to the next turn of this Dominion's YouTube multiplayer playthrough thingy on the internet with me and some other people from the internet that I found behind a cafe. That's not true at all. Nothing about that was true. Parts of it were true. Okay, so um, yeah, uh, let's start with the important bit. Let's look at this big battle because this is going to dictate everything else that follows for on it. So I just buy here. I saw this battle and thank goodness I did because this is really, really important. Let's talk about this a little bit. This is Utgard. He apparently has a huge army of giants. Jesus, if I had known he had these and he was using them in this way and they just existed and he was going to attack him, like so much of everything I was doing would be completely different. Um, look, I have played through this before. Why are you here, Mr. Scout? Unclear. Prophet? The Scout's a prophet? Oh my. Okay, well, choices, I suppose. Um, jeez, that's un that's odd. Okay, like it's not the worst choice for like claiming thrones. It's just odd. But why would you put him in the battle? I guess for the divine blessing. That's a good reason actually. But uh, yeah, he has this. This guy is going to do some really, really, really good work. I don't know what name that is. It is unclear. Okay, but uh, he does have the classic thug items of a frost band and a vine shield, and we will see how good they do. Okay, on to the army of McLan. He has large province defense, which is something he's been doing all around his army. He's got these guys. These guys must be recruited from some province. It's, I don't really remember or recognize being able to recruit these just as independents, but here they are, so that's nice. Um, but yeah, here's uh, the pile of Jaguar warriors that are terrifying with their quickness and luck bless, and they're just horrible. Um, <laughs> he also has got this flying goon squad, um, which can fly. They're a goon squad. They also have the same bless because they're sacred, and it's it's just horrible. Um, we have some slaves, which are just terrible. And um, yeah, who are you? You're just a commander. That's fine. Um, this is probably here too. This guy's probably in the back to catch things set on to attack rear. Um, <clears throat> so so let's see how this goes. Oh my. Um, these giants are great. This is all much too loud. Um, <laughs> can I turn the volume down just a little bit? Can I do for here? I don't think I can. Okay, but um, I think it's just loud for me, not loud for you. Okay, so ah, let's go back. So these guys also have a great blessing. They've got regeneration, and they've also got slash, blunt, and pierce resistance, and a lot of hit points, and actually reasonable protection, and magic weapons, so, with berserk. So these guys have a very strong bless too. Like, <laughs> there's no kidding around that situation. Are they berserking already? Well, that's, I guess they get berserk and then they regen. That's, that's rude. Okay, here they come down, the flying things into the ax things and things are happening, and I presume things are dying, but these guys aren't dying very much, and the Jaguar Warriors are here, oh my. Like, the, the, I don't feel that the Giants really hold up well against the Jaguar Warriors much at all. I think the Jaguar Warriors definitely do better. And the annoying thing about Jaguar Warriors is that they're so much cheaper than these Giants, like so, so, so much. Like you had a whole bunch of Giants, and they did almost nothing to this pile of Jaguar Warriors and like I really 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 want Utgard to win. These things are still alive somehow. Um, oh that's the morale that's just suffered. But um, yeah this is where this guy just oh liquid form this is such a good buff actually. This unit is semi liquid and it's difficult to harm it will really get reflections but it's slower and weaker than normal. It's, this is such a good thing. Um, wow, okay, so it can cost it for itself. Uh, but uh, check this out, just Vine Shield, right? More Vine Shield, completely incapacitating a whole bunch of Jaguar Warriors. Well, the actual giants get to a ham home, but these Jaguar Warriors are just gonna like, just kill things. But just disabling this whole bunch I think actually saved the battle for um, Utgard. I think without this this thug, things might have gone actually very, very differently. These Jaguars just hit too hard. And they're too hard to kill as well. Ah. 
and all the horses as well. Run away, run away, run away. Okay, so that's basically the battle. Um, Vine shield, I think, is the main thing I learned from this lesson. is important. Um, the stug is amazing. Um, the frost brand is great as area of effect damage. I'm not quite sure if that goes to the luck. I'm quite sure it doesn't. But it allows you to do like small damages. And doing small damage to a jack warrior is actually pretty cool because you're not going to risk being negated by luck and you get a chance to do an affliction. So fortunately, Utgard won. And one might say it's actually good that he suffered because um, I think it's quite clear with Utgard's help like this, we will safely kill McLand fairly easily, I think, especially if man pulls some weight as well. Um, so you do actually want Utgard to be weak when McLand is dead because, you know, we all... We're, not, you know, we're temporary friends killing McLean. We're not real friends. We're just like pretending to be friends. But so it's it's pretty cool that he lost quite a lot. Um, I just hope that he still has enough strength to carry on. But this is great. Um, I guess a lot of Jaggy Warriors he lost, and I'm quite sure he lost um, quite a lot in the retreat as well. Um, Eagle Warriors too. But but look at this Jaggy Warrior. Twenty six gold, four resources. Like what else? Um, <laughs> Garden Herdings, like 55 gold, like, like it's not even fair, um, but that's it, oh, that does a lot of damage, 36, um, but that's the situation, so Utgard did a good victory against McLean, hurt him, and so that's great, like this is actually looking really, really positive, um, let's have a look at the messages, a green fledged arrow with a note attached is left in the gate of your capital, the note reads, another castle and temple has appeared at Heaven shine, yes. Utgard marches and the rest of um and the rest of us need to help. It's true. This emergency requires all of us to play our part. It's also true. Um as anticipated, the Jaguars are now at Ordos Grove 67, that's fine. Our agreement with Mikland runs its course next month, which is when we will begin raiding. I want you to do more than raiding raiding does. Like more than raiding. Do more than raiding. If the Jaguars remain in Ordos Grove or turn against us, they will open attacks for the rest of you to the north. I mean it's true. I don't think they know that me and Pangir aren't exactly in the best of terms. I haven't told them. Um, yeah, and remember, I already told Pangir I was attacking Miklan. Um, so I kind of know, but then I got this message from Miklan and geez, good to hear that you can handle, handle Pangir. We felt bad abandoning. But indeed, you could did plan to attack us. We should be able to deal with him and man if he decides to join. So, here is next great betrayal. I am an awful person. Awful, awful. Awful person. I'm an awful person. I betray everyone. I didn't want to. It's just you're terrifying. And you must die. Oh boy. Okay. Uh, my blood slaves, blood hunters, only 13 blood slaves this turn, which I was really disappointed about. I got like, damn, didn't find any, didn't find any, didn't find any, didn't find any. It's like very really disappointing. Um, these are just getting smacked by, you know, scouts. Lost two scouts. Um, not great about that. Got new palisades, some patrolling, and I basically put in all the movements I'm doing for this turn, so I can talk about some of those things. The carrion dragon is still here, which I'm worried about. I don't like this carrion dragon. I don't think he's going to take into my dominion. I have forts here. He's clearly scared because he's just chilling there. He could take this province back so easily. Like I don't think he knows it's like not even defended, but um, like that's baby just so a commander can't take it, but. Um, yeah, I may, I, there was a battle here, I didn't see it. Um, so I don't really quite know what Pankir is planning to do. He's actually really tiny. Um, like, if I was to him, I'd be using this Pank, this Carrion Dragon to actually, like, do something? Um, he, he can't attack me into my dominion. Um, he needs his bless. Um, Jeez, now I get confused about some of the mechanics sometimes. Like, I'm pretty sure you can't bless your pretender in enemy dominion. I'm pretty sure that's how that works. Um, either which way, he'll definitely have a hit point a debuff. Either which way, I'm leaving, so it's not much of a problem. Um, jeez, already. If he attacks me here, then I don't attack here. So. Uh, don't just send him here to attack him so he can't have a bell here and move to try and pin him. No. 
Um, I, I sent him a message basically saying I'm going to leave you alone. So let's leave it like that. Um, basically, what I'm concerned about is if he does a little attack here and he pins my army, I don't get to attack this province. I don't get to take that province. That's that's the thing I'm worried about. You don't have someone patrolling. That's a problem. I do have someone moving you. Um, okay, but I've got just chaff for a patroller when he arrives. A patroller is set to go there. Um, what else am I after? I'm after a level 2 Earth Mage now. I think that's important. So I'm going to recruit Black Priests until I get like the 25% chance to get a double Earth. Then I can buy both Earth Boots and like that Dwarven Hammer. And um, I want to see if I can get that going. So that's why I'm doing that. Um, I'm making a Black Steel Hat for a vampire to help the fight at the moment. Um, I'm just using them all to gather Blood Slaves to try and just get the blood economy keep going. Um, so I've basically got one, two, three, I've basically got enough blood slaves to cast Sanguine Heritage like already, they just aren't in the capital. So I'm getting to the point where I might be able to start soon casting um, Sanguine Heritage back to back and that'll be a great situation for me to be in where I can just spam out these things and they're a model, um, so they're great. Um, so attacking this province is just a ton of heavy cav. Um, I can't see anything going wrong with that attack. This attack, less likely to things to go wrong. Um, I've got some cav on the flank to attack rear. I've got some footmen in on the front and just archers in two groups. So they try and don't pick the same target. Um, I, I, you can get overkill, so that's why that's happening. I do want to pick up these provinces. I just don't have any armies to attack them yet, but they definitely are on a priority. If this province is taken, Midgard loses income from the water provinces, so that's also important. There's almost a, certainly a death site here, but I've searched here for death, so that's odd. Um, maybe it's a higher level. I'll try and sort that out at the moment. I will get enchantment 5 for next turn, which is great because it will give me Horde of Skeletons. And Pale Riders is actually a great spell too, Pale Riders. Um, if I can get a death army, that allows me to go into the water. So I might be able to take some water provinces, which would be important. I don't think there's anything here else that's I'm really after all interesting or accessible flaming arrows would be great but i just have no access to fire so mm. but it would be really good if i could get it got a lot of death gems so actually i don't you, you're gonna you're supposed to go where are you going you can go there to bloodhound not supposed to go there oh you're going here um yeah, so if you want to be named after the uh, vampire account, just put in suggestions now. Um, I'm kind of running out of names. I've, I didn't check, but uh, Wellen will be renamed to someone who comments. Um, so that's going to happen. Um, cost Richard Spell, Create Revenants. I do want one of these, actually. I definitely want one of these. But um, <clears throat> Blood Slayer is more important for now. It will come. It will come. And then I can use the Revenant when I give him a Skull Staff, which I will make. Um, research and Construction 4, there are just too many items that I want. And then I'll go for the Soul Vortex. Construction 4 gives me Vine Shield, which I clearly need. Um, it also allows me to do Skull Staff and I think Dwarven Hammer or the Boots. Um, either which way, it's pretty important. And it's, it's not really expensive. And I've already got, I've got some solid research going. So when I switch to... Um, yeah, alteration, soul vortex here. And, I, and my research is also increasing quite quickly now. So I should be able to get soul vortex in pretty good time. Um, I'm quite happy about that, actually. I should send some messages, explain the situation. I basically got scouts everywhere. I've got like a ton of scouts out, which I'm really happy about. So I should be able to see wherever this army goes. I, what is going on with this province? I have no idea. I Just none. So, hmm. But yeah, I've got scouts here, scouts there, scouts there, going to have a scout there, going to go there. Tons of scouts, building more scouts, I want more scouts, I want to know everything that's going on. I am building um, these ranges basically everywhere as much as I can. Um, so that's good. I'm really like starting to build a strong army, getting the palisades here next turn, which is great, because that's gonna give me a huge income boost on two six seven. Also patrolling this down to get that under start because it's also hurting the income. This is such a rich province, it's so good. Um, <clears throat> yeah, send messages. 
Uh, let's just have a look, man. Yeah, I'll let him know that I'm attacking in this turn. And I'll hopes rest and grass heals. Hopes rest, grass heals. I must remember those things. Greetings. <clears throat> um, have comfort. We are attacking. Uh, by the time you have received this message, we will we will have taken Hope's rest and then siege to Grass Hill. Um, <clears throat> we encourage you to do more than simply raiding. Utgard has achieved an important victory and it's important to follow up on that success. Oh. Uh, let's... The text editor is great. You can't just click. You have to go all the way to the back. I think if you copy paste that it can do that now, but um, here we are. Greetings, most. Uh, tardy orator. Um, greetings, most. Wounded. Yeah, oratory, orator. Most wounded orator. That's <laughs> uh, it's just a it's a running joke. I'm having fun with it. I don't care. <laughs> I do it that way. Um, okay, so that's that. Um, send. God, I'm gonna have to send a message to McLan. <clears throat> um, greetings. Um, poo boy. Um, yeah. Your Jagio warriors pose a threat to this world that we simply cannot allow to exist or grow. I guess that's as much of an explanation as it's going to get. Send this message to Utgard. <clears throat> Congratulations on your victory. <clears throat> By the time you have received this message, we would have taken Oops, rest, let's capitalize, rest and laid siege to Brass Hills. Now is the time to strike the Jaguar's jugular. Oh. There we go, that's fine. Okay. Um, yeah, um, so I was thinking about asking him for Vine Shields, but, but really it's just, it's, it's easy enough for me to, it's easy enough for me to, let's research, research it myself. Um, it's in a message to Daz actually, because I want more gems. Uh, <clears throat> uh, greetings. Once again, most holy, Ah, <laughs> most holy exhaler. <clears throat> I don't care. I'm having fun. <clears throat> um, most holy tidy exhaler. Um, we are in endless need of nature gems and have plenty of earth gems to spare and some fire gems um, please send what nature gems you can and we will respond in kind also attached is five earth gems um, So send magic gems to man, send earth gems, five. 
Okay, um, yeah, hopefully he doesn't get upset with me for, you know, shenanigans, um, Pangea, but there it is. Okay, so that's that. Um, he's a decent fellow, even if I betrayed Pangea, I think he'll still give me the nature gems, maybe. He'll probably scold me. Okay, that's the turn. Um, it should be exciting next turn. Lots of fighting, lots of McClellan getting stomped in the face, I hope. Um, expanding my territories, getting more blood slaves. Everything's, everything's looking pretty... Pretty okay now. Is there anything I missed? Any unexpected events? No unexpected events. Um, yeah, okay, so there's something else I noticed is that um, Vanheim has got five, four. He has four throwing points. So if he gets the throne of the Pantocrator, he gets to ascend. Um, I don't know where the Pantocrator throne is, but it's definitely a thing to start keeping my eye on. I um, really need to make sure he doesn't get too many thrones because. It's getting worry, but that's the point, right? Um, we set the throwing threshold quite low to make it. I, I wanted it to be. I wanted there to be a chance for someone to be able to actually uh, ascend, because um, I think seven points is achievable. But um, anything more than that, I think, with this amount of players and this amount of backstabby, it would be very, very difficult. Okay, thanks for watching. Hope to see you next time.